Hi, I'm Zainab Jelani. I am a research analyst here at Cleantech Group, and I'm joined by Jack Ellis, who will be talking about carbon farming today. When we're talking about soil carbon and carbon farming, uh, we're talking about organic carbon that is stored or present in, in soil. Um, so that's, uh, that comes from um, animals and plants that have died and are decaying or parts of plants mm -hmm. that are, are, are decaying. It also includes living organisms, uh, microbes that are in the soil, as well as uh, inorganic material. Um, so that uh, forms the carbon content of soil. Why is it so important for the soil to have a certain amount of carbon um, in it? So why is soil organic important for, for farmers? Sure. So uh, the organ organic carbon content of soil um, actually has many benefits for the growth of plants, crops. Mm -hmm. um, it encourages a better soil structure, which in turn encourages uh, better water retention, um, helps uh, plants with their ability to um, uptake nutrients from the soil. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so it, there is uh, there are benefits to sequestering more carbon in, in agricultural soils. Um, it's important to note, though, that agricultural activity actually uh, releases carbon from the soil. Mm -hmm. So things like uh, tilling, um, planting seeds, grazing animals, these all uh, kind of um, disrupt the, the, uh, the soil and therefore carbon is, is emitted. So what, when we talk about carbon farming, we're thinking about ways to um, maintain or enhance soil carbon levels that are, na that are being lost through agricultural mm -hmm. activity. Yeah, so um, maybe tell us a little bit more about like the soil carbon uh, market in general and like are, are there abilities to generate offset from this? Because if you're sequestering carbon into the soil, it sounds like there are opportunities where, um, where yeah, you, can, you might be able to generate offsets. Sure. So there are these benefits to agriculture uh, from having uh, optimal soil carbon mm -hmm. levels. Um, in more recent times, with all the kind of discussion around carbon markets, there is this, uh, this new drive towards actually monetizing some of that carbon mm -hmm. storage in the form of offsets or credits. Um, so uh, on the one hand, there is uh, yeah, the, the possibility of measuring and verifying soil carbon content and then selling that as offsets to companies that are, are looking to offset their own emissions. But most of what we're seeing at the moment, I think, is, um, is what we tend to term as insetting, right? So mm -hmm. it's uh, companies in the agri-food value chain who have scope three emissions that they want to reduce. They have net zero commitments that they, they want to stick to. They are looking upstream at their farmer partners and trying to think about ways that they can help their farmer partners to... Um, sequester more carbon in the mm -hmm. soil, uh, maintain soil carbon levels and perhaps enhance those through uh, practices that do that, like regenerative agriculture practices, um, use of soil amendments that mm -hmm. actually add carbon back into the soil. And they are trying to work together to come up with, with programs, initiatives that enable that and reward their farmer partners for meeting some of those objectives. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the companies that you've been seeing working in this space and how they're working with farmers or those third-party organizations in general that are interested in these offsets? Sure. So uh, some of the companies that are running these kind of regenerative ag uh, initiatives that have mm -hmm. a, a, a carbon component to them include PepsiCo, which has lots of um, farmers upstream that are mm -hmm. supplying to it. Um, similar case for Arla, which is a mm -hmm. European dairy company. And uh, Cargill, big American agribusiness, they all have these uh, these kinds of programs where they're trying to incentivize their farmer partners to um, sequester more carbon in their soil, adopt regenerative agriculture practices that do that and have many other co-benefits as well. Um, yeah.
Yeah, no, that's that's really interesting, especially when you're talking about the corporates. I know that, that there are some innovators also in the space as well. And I know we've been talking a little bit about some of the innovators involved with whether they're soil amendments or just enhanced weathering. So sometimes I think there are technologies and processes that allow you to like add amendments into the soil. And that also helps with the soil resiliency, as well as providing some of those carbon sequestration um, benefits as well. Yeah, so one of the one company in particular that comes to mind uh, with uh, when we talk about soil amendments is uh, Lithos. They, uh, Californian company, recently raised funding. Mm -hmm. They're producing a, a, a kind of rock-based soil amendment, so farmers add this crushed uh, rock material to, to their fields to increase carbon levels. It's kind of a direct way mm -hmm. of sequestering carbon. Um, that's just one area of, innova of innovation in, in the carbon farming space. There are also companies like uh, Regrow Ag, mm -hmm. who are providing uh, essentially a software platform and tools to help farmers and corporates to understand uh, carbon levels in their soil and um, help share that information throughout the, the, the supply chains that they, they work in. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. Um, and I guess one of my next questions is like, can you talk a little bit more about like some of the tools and technologies that are used to, to actually monitor the monitor the level of soil? Because it sounds like that's important, you know, kind of regardless of whether you're doing whether you're trying to generate carbon offsets or whether you're just looking to make sure that the soil is healthy in general. Sure. Traditionally or conventionally, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, of this work has been done by taking physical samples from the soil. So an agronomist or a farmer is walking into the field, taking, uh, taking a sample of the soil, sending that off to a lab to be analyzed. Um, that is an accurate way of uh, understanding carbon mm -hmm. levels in, in the soil, uh, but it tends to be very time consuming. It can take uh, weeks for, for that sample to get to the lab and come back to the farmer, um, and it can be expensive. If we want to have a kind of, um, you know, a credible, um, high-functioning market in agricultural soil carbon credits, things will need to be able to move a bit quicker than that because soil carbon levels are very dynamic. Um, so a lot of the innovation at the moment in, in the monitoring regard is about um, kind of supplementing that conventional soil sampling with other technologies that can give us more of a real-time picture of soil carbon levels. Um, that includes satellite imagery, mm -hmm. uh, it includes other forms of aerial imagery from drones or aircraft. Um, it also includes um, kind of on-site sensing, so in, in soil sensors. Um, I guess to kind of like go a bit off of what you were saying, um, it sounds like there's a lot of innovation in this area and that there's a lot to look forward to, especially in the next coming months and years as we look at these trends in carbon farming. Um, unfortunately, we don't have as much time to get dive into like what the, the future looks like, but yeah, no, it's exciting to speak to you and thank you for your time. Thanks, Anna.